Hello and welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. Today we're going to have a good look at new development board from NVIDIA, Jetson Xavier NX, and compare it to another development kit from NVIDIA, Jetson Nano. The compute module, Xavier NX, was announced on November 6, 2019, but the development kit, which includes the module itself and the reference carrier board, was announced half a year later, on May 14, 2020. This is the opposite situation of what happened with Jetson Nano. In that case, development kit came first, and then the compute module became available for purchase. So, how does Xavier NX compare to Jetson Nano? The price difference is significant. It's 99 US dollars versus 399 for Xavier NX, or about 400%. Is there a clear threshold when you know that Jetson Nano is not going to be enough for your application and you need to up your gaming level? Before we start our comparison, we should note that these two products are being targeted for two different consumer markets. NVIDIA Jetson Nano is for makers and STEM education and new Xavier NX more geared towards professional and commercial use. It was very obvious from sample applications that were released on products launch. For Jetson Nano, it was Jetbot with series of user-friendly notebooks. And for Jetson Xavier NX, it was a demo of cloud-native applications which appeals more to commercial users. This still warrants a comparison between these two. Think about it as Xavier NX being a sports car with two turbo engines, and Jetson Nana is more down-to-earth sedan. We don't always go for fastest car available, there are other considerations that we also have. In this video, we'll go over hardware, specs, benchmarking, cloud-native container demo, and custom model inference. Looking at small but important details, sometimes overlooked in other reviews. Let's start by looking at two dev kits side by side. I'll skip the unpacking because, well, you know how to open the box without me. If not, please leave a comment below, I'll make another tutorial soon. First the similarities. Both development boards are similar in size and the modules are exactly the same size and form factor. Which is great for developers, it means that during development stages swapping nanomodule for Jetson Xavier NX won't require changing connectors or physical design of carrier boards, providing they use revision B01 of Jetson Nano development kit. Both carrier boards have gigabit Ethernet jack, four USB 3 ports, although for Jetson Nano is 3.0 and for Xavier it is 3.1 USB. HDMI port and display port. Now for differences. Xavier NX development kit board has one M2 key E and one M2 key M connector. With M2 key E slot already occupied with Bluetooth Wi-Fi module. M2 key M can be used for attaching NVMe SSD. Jetson Nano carrier board has only one M2 key E connector right here. Jetson Nana carrier board I have here is AO2 carrier board, the one that originally went on sale when Jetson Nana development kit was just released. It has some differences from B01 carrier board, notably that B01 has two CSI2 camera interfaces, same as Xavier NX carrier board. And on my old AO2 carrier board, you only see one CSI2 camera connector. Xavier NX has active cooling installed, while Jetson Nana only has a heatsink. It is because Xavier 
is much more power hungry than its younger cousin. The development kit cannot be powered by 5V USB and it requires 19V power supply, which fortunately is included in the box. The reference carrier board of Xavier NX has more well sought design with little plastic base that serves two purposes protects the circuits from directly touching the surface of your workplace and it also holds two antennas unlike with Jetson Nana where the two antennas just sort of dangling around it's a slight detail but very nice let's quickly compare the specs now using the data from official NVIDIA website Apart from very obvious things, such as Xavier NX having CPU with more cores and higher clock and more RAM, faster too, it is the AI performance column that worth pay more attention to. Before you go, holy cow, the AI performance of Xavier NX is 44 times higher than of Jetson Nano. It is worth noting that the comparison is between different units, tops versus gigaflops or teraflops. The reason for that is for Xavier NX, the compute of NVDLA engines is included in that very impressive number. Jetson Nano and all the members of Jetson family, TX1, TX2, only have GPU for accelerating machine learning inference, which are optimized for floating point operations. NVDLA engines, on the other hand, are different beasts entirely. They are ASICs, or application-specific integrated circuits, more akin to Google TPU or Intel Movidius chips. They excel at running CNN inference in integer 8 precision, doing that task faster and more energy efficient than GPUs. The downside being that they are not as general purpose when it comes to different network architecture support. NVIDIA realized that GPUs alone cannot beat highly specialized hardware and decided to take best of both worlds by having both advanced 384 core NVIDIA Volta GPU with 48 tensor cores and dedicated CNN accelerators and a new module. Speaking of tensor cores, we also see that these are missing from NVIDIA Jetson Nano's GPU. Now, what on earth is Tensor Core? That's exactly the title of an article in the first page of Google search results for a Tensor Core. Comparing to CUDA cores, CUDA cores operate on per calculation basis. Each individual CUDA core can perform one precise calculation per evolution of GPU. As a result, clock speed plays a major role in the performance of CUDA as well as the mass of CUDA cores available on the card. Tensor cores, on the other hand, can calculate with an entire 4x4 matrix operation being calculated per clock. Look at the animation here to get a sort of intuitive understanding of what's going on in regular CUDA core versus tensor core. All right, that was a brisk but invigorating walkthrough forest of high-performance compute. If you're an engineer like me, you want to know exactly how all that translates to inference performance. This time, NVIDIA created a dedicated GitHub repository with easily downloadable and executable benchmarks, a decision I can applaud to. So, I ran benchmarks from this repository on both NVIDIA Jetson Nano and Xavier NX.
Quite unsurprisingly, the results were very close to this from NVIDIA blog article. Something worth paying attention to is that for Xavier NX, the total FPS is sum of FPS obtained from running model on two DLA engines and GPU simultaneously. You can find that by looking at the content of Benchmark Pi. You can also modify it to print out the total FPS and also inference time for each device, like you saw in my benchmark. For the second test, we'll be using much touted new feature in Jetpack 4.4, Cloud Native. Basically, it is about bringing containerization and orchestration from servers to edge devices. Why do this? To simplify the continued development, containers are self-contained packages that include all the necessary environments to run the application. Main selling point of containerization is that they make upgrades easier. Because they're self-contained, you don't need to worry about changing one application, will it, how will it affect others and the environment you work in. Containers come and go, being easily replaceable. NVIDIA prepared a customer service robot demo to showcase the new container management system and hardware capabilities of Xavier NX. Because the containers for the demo have Tensor RT engine files built for Jetson AGX Xavier and Jetson Xavier NX and can be run on only on these two platforms. So, we'll download and try another container, Deepstream L4T, and run sample applications from within the container. Sample applications are already compiled and ready to run within the container. Unfortunately, they hard-coded to look for their respective config file in the folder where you run the application, which might cause some confusion. Have a look at the article to find out how to run the sample applications. We will go for Deepstream App Test 3. Jetson Nana can only run smoothly one video stream. Once we add the second one, performance drops significantly. Surprisingly enough, for Jetson Xavier NX, we see similar picture. Once we add the second stream, we can see that the, it starts dropping frames. As we can see, GPU and CPU load did not go to 100%, so it means the bottleneck that hurts our performance is somewhere else. My suspicion that it is the slow speed of memory card. For NVIDIA's customer service robot demo, it is necessary to use NVMe SSD, so perhaps that is the reason. As for our final comparison, let's try stepping aside from the demos NVIDIA have provided and using a model we trained ourselves. In the end, this is the real test of performance and user-friendliness the results you can achieve, as opposed to carefully optimized demos. We will use Accelerate, a Keras-based framework for AI on the edge. Its purpose is to simplify the training and conversion of the models to be run with hardware acceleration on various edge devices, such as K210, Edge TPU, Android and Raspberry Pi, and also NVIDIA development boards. NVIDIA Model Optimization Toolkit, Tensor RT, is very different from other toolkits for model conversion, such as NNKs or Google Coral Converter. Unlike the rest of them, with Tensor RT, you need to optimize model on the target device, since optimizations depend on target device's architecture. Tensor RT definitely deserves a video or possibly a video series of its own and I will make one in the future. We will use NASNet Mobile, trained on Stanford Dog Breeds dataset. After training is done, download the ONNX file to Jetson and run ONNX to TRTPy file in example scripts and Jetson classifier folder. 
Now we can run classifier video pi on a sample video file. Jetson Nano averages FPS of around 15 frames per second and Jetson Xavier can process the video with adorable dogs at about 30 frames per second. Consult the article to reproduce experiments by yourself and convert other models to be run on Jetson devices. As for conclusion, new NVIDIA Jetson Xavier NX is a beast. It's power-hungry, but if performance is what you're aiming for, uh, this is possibly best module you can get at this footprint and price. If you are developing an application that requires processing multiple video streams at high resolution while performing ASR or NLP tasks or another GPU-related task, such as CUDA-enabled SLAM, for example. Then, Jetson Xavier NX Deep Learning Accelerators can take on CNN inference and leave GPU for other tasks. Something that older TX2 or Jetson Nana are not capable of. For makers and hobbyists, well, if you're buying it, make sure you have enough technical knowledge to properly utilize the capabilities of this hardware and eliminate the performance bottlenecks if you encounter them. Do you have any ideas in mind what sort of application can fully utilize the full extent of hardware capabilities of Jetson Xavier NX? If you do, leave the comment below. If the video was helpful for you, press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Until the next time!